Hello, I'm Jason Skill. This is Painting with Skill Lesson 11. In this lesson, we'll look at making vertical marks. The past two lessons, we've looked at horizontal mark making, generally. The vertical mark making is often easiest done if you think about making the mark in a soaring action, so that your arm has free movement to your side. If you're making movements and you're doing it in front of you, then you're in the way. It's going to hit your tummy or it's going to hit your chest. So you need your arm so that generally you can move to the side of you. And that sometimes means that you have to move out of the way or reposition yourself so that it works best for you. The other thing that you must consider is can you see the end of the brush? A lot of people will paint sort of like this and then they kind of look from the side. I would suggest that you actually can get over that if you drop the brush so that that's kind of a 45 degree angle from the page. If that's at a 45 degree angle, you can now see the tip of the brush. So what I'm doing, I'm holding exactly the same way that I was when I was doing the pincer up and down movement that we were talking about in the last lesson. But this time I'm holding it so I can see the tip of the brush and I'm going to saw down or I'm going to saw up. So all I'm going to do for a bit is literally go up and down almost like I'm sawing the page and get confident at making that mark. Okay, let's move that slightly to the side, the palette there, and I'm going to move this to a bit further over, and I'm going to hold that. Again, this is quite tight here. I'm holding that with some force, and I'm trying to put all of my fingers together so that when I place that down, it isn't sort of sloppy. It makes a tight movement, so it's a sort of a tightly knit unit. And there's also some tension in this point here. It's almost like a right angle in my hand. I push that down, and, and I'm putting some tension through my wrist at the same time. So when I push that forward, it's solid. This isn't kind of floppy moving backwards and forwards. So if I need to make marks further over now, I need to move me. So I move over, so I've got room again, and I'm going to make some more marks. Now if I want to make them thinner, I have to pull the brush up, pin some movement it up slightly higher. If I need to make them thicker, I can push it down, pin some movement lower, pin some movement higher, pin some movement lower. What some artists will do is they will simply lower the angle of that, but it gets to a point where you can't actually get this much lower. So you basically go as low as you can, still holding it tight, and you push that flat. So I'm almost using the full width of the brush. But what I'm wanting is that this side, I'm trying to think and look at this side. So I'm trying to make that the straight edge. And with practice, you can make that get very, very straight with confidence. Now, if I want to make this a straight edge, I'm right-handed, I can't make this edge be straight. So I then have to shift to this position. So I now probably have to hold me slightly higher, and instead of uh, holding that as a, basically a right angle sideways, I'm now holding it so that still the same kind of pincer movement, but I'm now running on my little finger this way. And I am going to hold that and pull that towards me, but I'll probably have to lift my head up a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And then I pull that down. So I might start the mark with the lower one sideways, but to the right hand side of it, I change the mark and then I pull it down with that one. So it's two actions. You can, and both of those are very much worth practicing. A little exercise that you could try would be, can you do yourself a little city by just confidently doing a series of kind of basic skyscrapers, like so, and then maybe I'm going that way. Now I need to see that way. I've turned that so I can still see the end of it, or I could do it this way, horizontally. Think about what are you doing in terms of seeing the brush. So I could add some more. If I wanted. Well worth playing with just shapes. Can you make the shape without thinking about drawing it out and filling it in?
So while we're on with this painting vertically, what about doing a box? Box that way. Now I've turned my hand so that the box is this way. So I'm now looking at doing the top of it so I can see it that way. And then I'll turn so I'm going sideways, like I did when I was painting horizontals. And then I go vertical. So let's look at that again. I'm going to go the one where I go horizontally. Let's start our box horizontally. And then we need to go vertically. But I think, well, actually, that line's best if I now drag it down. And I think, well, actually, I could just carry on dragging it down that way if I wanted. Just practice my vertical movement. So I get to that end, and then if that one's worked fine, then we could leave it like that, or you could try pulling it down. I just load that with a bit more paint, which ran out a little bit. Don't worry about how square and perfect the box is. And then I'd turn to this angle to finish the box. So think about what you're doing with the brush. Don't draw it necessarily and just fill it in. Think about how can you see the end of the brush and how can you make that mark. Okay. In the next lesson we'll be looking at uh, some marks that you can do with the brush which will enable you to think in terms of dry brush marks.